Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. We are glad that you are here and have joined us online as we worship our Lord and Savior. We just want to say a, a great big thank you to everyone who helped support our youth this past week and came out to our Cinco de Mayo dinner. We had a great turnout. Um, we served lots of people and, and uh, helped our youth go to their mission trip this summer in Idaho. And so the youth all say thank you and I say thank you as well. It is just great to be a part of this community together. Welcome to worship. We're glad that you're here. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So now let us confess our sin in the presence of God, and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I now invite you to join me in praying our prayer of the day. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which can exceed all we desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. 
The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth, the word of the Lord. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from John, the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. There's definitely days when I have my doubts about my abilities. I struggle with my temper. I struggle with like how I react with situations. I wish I knew how to calm myself before speaking to them. I wish I was better at taking time to sit down and just listen more to my child. I wish I was more confident in being a mom. I'm not the most patient person in the world. Patience. Patience is far and away probably the biggest struggle. I just want them to know just how much I love them. My mom is totally awesome. She's fun to snuggle with. Pretty funny. She does cook a lot of food for me. She's just unique. That's why I love her so much. We go on dates together, like we go shopping. She loves me a lot. I have a lot of favorite things about my mom. We like to watch movies together and color and stuff. We go to church together, we volunteer together. She is like my heart, I guess you could say, because she's that close to me. My favorite thing is to jump on a trampoline with my mom. That's my most favorite thing to go up high. We like get ice cream or something and like you go to the nail salon and have fun. <laughs> my mommy's my hero. She's pretty and beautiful. She is my hero. She just will care about me and just always love me forever. She's the best. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs>Well, dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and His Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all of you moms out there. 
You don't give yourself enough credit, and especially this past year, you are all valued and loved. I know today is a day of celebration for moms and mom figures, as it should be. And also I know that today is hard for many of you, and I want to acknowledge that as well. Even within our own church family, I know so many of you are grieving this Mother's Day, grieving the loss of your child or your grandchild, grieving the loss of your own mother, or grieving waiting to be a mother so badly. And so as a church, as a body of Christ who stands together in hard times and celebrates together as well, if today is a hard day for you, for whatever reason, I want you to know that you are loved and cared for here. This is what we do as a church. We celebrate together, we share joy together, while at the exact same time we walk with each other and care for each other in any hardships that life brings. So we recognize you today, whatever you are experiencing on this Mother's Day. And as we begin, I would love to share a beautiful prayer that was sent to me with all of you. Let us pray. For those who have eagerly anticipated this Mother's Day, we pray. For those who long to be called mommy, we pray. For those who wish they could hold their children again, we pray. For those who tire of being told they should become mothers, we pray. For those who can only remember their mothers today, we pray. For those who think of their mothers and shake their heads, we pray. For those who would rather flee than encounter their mothers again, we pray. For those who are celebrating being a mother or the mothers they have, we pray. For the whole world, we pray. And for your mothering presence in our life, O oh Lord, we give thanks. In the name of your unique Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, our confirmation students have been diligently submitting their sermon notes throughout this past year as confirmation requirements for their program. And one of the questions on the sermon notes is, what was the sermon about this week? Or something along those lines. What did you get out of it? And we have one student that I just recently realized has been answering with the word love every single week throughout the whole year. The sermon was something about love. I learned about love. Or simply just plain love. No explanation needed. And I'm not sure if they're giving me that answer because they're not really listening to the sermons or because they recognize that the gospel in its entirety is about love. I hope it's the latter because the latter is the truth. And Jesus makes this abundantly clear when he gives his disciples a commandment in our gospel reading for today. Love one another as I have loved you. And it seems so simple. You are loved. Now go and spread that love. So why can't we get this right? Why can't I get it right? Why can't the world get it right? As much as I want to show love to everyone, I know that I don't. And I think often I force myself to love others because it's the right thing to do. But the problem is when I force myself to do it, well, I don't think that that is really love. It's like when I force my kids to say sorry or to be kind to one another. Are they really sorry? Maybe, maybe not. But they know that they will be in trouble if they don't say sorry. And so whether or not they actually mean it has no value. Likewise, I know I should love others. But sometimes it's just easier said than done. I think sometimes I perform a loving act or behave like I love others, but I'm not convinced that it is pure and genuine love all the time, especially when comparing it to the kind of love that Jesus is talking about. Jesus doesn't give his disciples or us the easy out of doing nice things with clenched, resentful hearts nor would I want him to. Nothing feels as hollow as loving acts performed lovelessly. 
Furthermore, I doubt that the people who flocked to Jesus would have done so if they sensed that his compassion or love was a forced thing. Now in our scripture reading for today, when Jesus says, love as I have loved you, he means it. As in, for real. As in the whole package. Authentic feeling, honest engagement, generous action. Doesn't it sound as if he's asking for the impossible? Imagine what would happen to us if we took this commandment seriously. How would we have to change? What could this look like if we cultivated this impossible love? Now I ask these questions with apprehension because I don't know how to answer them, even for myself. I think we do an incredible job of showing love to those who we're comfortable with. You all blow me away with your love and generosity of helping this community and people right here in our own congregation when something happens. Providing meals, sending cards, continuing to support missions through financial gifts, and those are absolutely hands down ways that we love our neighbor. But it's also comfortable, necessary, and please don't stop, but comfortable. What about showing love that's not comfortable? When's the last time that you did that? Now when I preach, I believe that part of it is not just interpreting God's word, but believing in the living word, as we call it. Believing that the Bible speaks to us and God works in and through his words just as much today as it did to the people when it was written. And Christ is calling us today, challenging us today, through the Bible, through God's word, to really think about what it means to love others, to really think about who the others are, to really think about who you are comfortable with and those who you aren't so comfortable with. If, as one of our students notes on their sermon notes each and every week, the way of Jesus is all about love, then we need to find ways to press on. At the very least, we need to keep asking questions, to keep having conversations and pursuing answers. How shall we love as Jesus loved? How shall we sustain such depths of compassion and remain healthy? Do we have it in us to experience a hunger for justice so fierce and so urgent that will rearrange our lives in order to pursue it? Do we want to? It's so easy to remain in our bubble, in our community even. It's so comfortable. Charitable actions are easy, but cultivating my heart, preparing and pruning it to love, becoming vulnerable in authentic ways to the world's pain, those things are hard hard and costly. So what can we do? Where must we begin? Jesus offers a single straightforward answer when he says, abide in my love. Following on the heels of last week's gospel, Jesus extends the metaphor of the vine and the branches and, and calls us once again to abide, to rest, to cling, to make ourselves at home, not simply in him, but in his love. My problem is that I often see Jesus as a role model, but yet I fail over and over when I strive to be like him. But abiding in something is not the same as emulating it. In the vine and branches metaphor that takes place just before our reading today, Jesus' love is not our example. It's our source. It's where our love originates and deepens, where it replenishes itself. In other words, if, if we don't abide, we can't love. Jesus' commandment to us is not that we wear ourselves out trying to create love from our own easily depleted resources. Rather, it's that we abide in the holy place where divine love becomes possible. That we make our home in Jesus' love, the most abundant and limitless love in existence. And it is so often the case in our lives as Christians 
Jesus' commandment leads us straight to paradox. We are called to action through rest, called to become love as we abide in love. In other words, we will become what we attend to. We will give away what we take in. The commandment, or better yet, the invitation, is to drink our fill of the source, which is Christ, spill over to bless the world, and then return to the source for a fresh infilling. This is our movement, our rhythm, our dance, over and over again. This is where we begin and end and begin again. Love one another as I have loved you. Abide in my love. Abide in his love, the never-ending, never-failing, always-present love of Christ that he has given to you. Amen. I now invite you to join me in praying the words of our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So now alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. Creating God, the whole earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love, so that by their song, all creatures of land and sea and sky, burrowing and soaring, all may call us to join with them in praise of you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful Savior, you conquer, you conquer the world, not with weapons of might, but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit, so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering, especially members and family and friends of our church here at Peace. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point all of us towards life-changing responses to these needs in our own communities. Be with all of those who are nearing the end of their days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving those who shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we lift all this up to you, our risen Christ and Lord. Amen. And now at this time, as we receive our offering, because we are blessed to be a blessing to one another, we have a couple options for you to give if you feel so moved. And one of the ways is if you follow the link on the next screen that's going to pop up. You just click that and you can give that way. But otherwise, feel free to, I mean, you could mail, you could mail your check-in, but feel free to swing by, say hello, chat up me and Pat. We'd love to see you if you haven't been around in a while. So, because we are blessed to be a blessing to one another, we receive our offering now. So now as we enter into this time of Holy Communion, I invite you to grab whatever you have, either your kits, your, your juice, your crackers, your bread, whatever you've got at home, because we are invited to dine together at this table, and I don't want you to feel left out or miss out. So on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So now gathered into one around this table by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So now as you take that wafer, that bread, hear these words, that this is the body of Christ given for you. And then go ahead, grab your, your juice, your wine, whatever you have. And hear these words, that this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ. Amen. So now as we leave this time and this place of worship, I give you this blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.